Hi everyone, welcome to The Next Normal and America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna, and each Wednesday we get together and have a heart-to-heart conversation with some of the most profound voices. Recently, I've been enjoying interviewing some of the co-authors in Mayhem to Miracles, published by Sacred Stories Publishers. And I have to tell you, each story just really holds you in your seat. One in particular that touched me is our next guest, Teresa Velardi, who really, I don't know, it was, she's just got a story, you know, and Uh, I find that her story is very, very impactful. I mean, she's lived all over the world. She works with coaching clients and authors to bring out the best of who they are and their messaging in a way that reflects their heart and their mission and their effect on this ever-changing world. Her abilities as a writer, publisher, editor, coach, are vital ingredients that she brings to those who choose to share their message with the world, either on her show or through her publishing platform. Teresa also hosts the video podcast, Conversations, hmm, that make a difference on Dream Visions 7 Radio Network, and is a co-author in the new book, Mayhem to Miracles, Sacred Stories of Transformational Hope, consisting of inspiration stories from 30 authors. Teresa, welcome to The Next Normal and America Meditating Radio. Thank you, Sister Jenna. I'm excited and happy to be here. Before we discuss the new book, Mayhem to Miracles, tell us a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to become a coach. So, um, as you said, I have had a life of um, interesting things happen. And um, I shared several of them in this series through the three books. But um, one of the things that I believe is important is that when we go through an experience regardless of how we come through it, there is always somebody else who's going through the experience and needs to hold on to hope or joy or the possibility of change. So I felt it in my spirit that I really needed to take the lessons that I learned from these experiences and share them with other people and make room for them to tell their story with a little bit more joy and hope in their lives. It's so lovely when you actually hear the story of another person rather than sometimes just you trying to convince somebody of your own story. (laughs) And that's one of the things that I think the magic or the miracle in Mayhem to Miracles, it has this this overarching energy about it that you're going to sit on your couch and your table in your bed. And as you're listening to these stories that are being offered with such purity of intent, it changes you. It really does. It changes you. So you've said that faith in God, uh, gratitude, and giving are your heart. What brought you to this point of personal and spiritual evolution? Uh, Wow. There were several things. The main thing was that... um, This goes back to one of the other uh, other books in that series. But one of the things that really brought me this close to God and to spirit, my spiritual well-being and who I am, who I am created to be, was a moment that I had looking in the mirror as I was trying to figure out my life and how to get out of a really abusive relationship. And I had what I call a come to Jesus moment. <laughs> and I had for years and years and years... Um, thought that everything that was happening to me was the result of my not listening to a clear message from from God. And uh, I thought the the upbringing that I had was that um, I thought that if I wasn't listening or I wasn't following through on what I was asked to do, that everything else that happened to me was punishment for not listening. So when that moment came that I had to have this real come to Jesus moment, sobbing in the mirror, just wondering what my purpose was for my life. I just kind of surrendered to the new possibility and everything changed. Wow, incredible. It's um, when we have those awakenings, those aha moments, those come to Jesus moments, it is one of the most priceless gifts a soul can receive because it's 
it's the opportunity to take you into a better and a newer version of yourself rather than to be so stuck in the old doldrum part of you. So many of us are trying to change, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't really have the courage to make the change. So we stay with what we've got or what we're comfortable with and argue with ourselves inside time and time again or argue with each other. Like you're like this, you're like that, when in reality what we're trying to communicate is, God, could I just get a come to Jesus moment and find the courage to change my own ways? You know, and so really it's a very profound time. I think this pandemic has definitely invited quite a number of people to begin that exploration. I've been on my journey for almost 30 years and I'm still having my come to Jesus, Baba, Krishna, Kuda, Allah moments, you know, and I really want yes. more and more of them. So you've also um, been publishing, you also have a publishing platform and you have We Be Book Publishing. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that and the types of book that you publish. Okay, so in Weeby Books, we publish um, business books, people who, ha who, people who are uh, coaches and teachers in the business world. Um, we also have, um, we, we will publish basically anything that is relative and um, can invite the reader in to experience whatever it is, just as, as being a coach, have the, have the uh, reader come in to experience what it is that has been successful for them. We'll also publish novels. Basically, the stuff that we don't publish is the occult and pornography. I have a children's book platform as well. And um, there's a lot of children's books coming out. People during, you know, there are, everybody looks at like the bad things that have happened in this. Not everybody. Some of us say in the, in the positive. Look at all the different things that have happened that have harmed them. Where there are a bunch of people who are in this world who have a story to tell, whether it be by virtue of a child's book or whether it be by virtue of a business book, a novel, their individual story, biographies. We have a Weeby Books Publishing will publish um, your story and um, help you along the way to give life to it and share it with the world. How do you handle the marketing? Has the marketing been easy and have you been able to get some of these books out far and wide where you feel the result is really worth the energy? I, I believe it is, absolutely. We do something different than uh, most, most publishing companies do. We provide the service of getting the books um, put together and we put them up on the author's platform so that they get all the royalties. And we just provide the service. And we do have... You know, I, I'm Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis is my business partner with Weeby Books Publishing. And so we have radio platforms, video platforms, so that we, um, we help our authors get a little bit of visibility and, um, and give them a hand up to success as a, as a writer, as an author, as a leader in their industry. Beautiful. Congratulations. So Thank Mayhem you. to Miracles share sacred stories of transformational hope. What is hope to you? What does it look like? Oh my goodness! Possibility comes to mind. Mm -hmm. It's the first word that comes to mind when I when I think about hope, and I think about um, you know I've been in a place where I have had I felt like I have had no hope, and then came that moment you know where I really looked at myself and said, um, God didn't take me this far to drop me on my head now. So I really think there's something else coming from this, good, bad, or otherwise, and I chose. I always choose to hold on to the possibility, to the positivity, to gratitude, which is um, a huge practice in my life, and, and really just be in the moment rather than thinking about what was or what could possibly be in any kind of negative way. I bring whatever possibility could be, be in any single moment, and that gives me hope for a better day, a better minute. A better future. It just—it's yeah. an—it's an attitude. It's a—and it's a feeling in your heart. It's part of your spirit. I believe that um, that we come to a place where there is possibility for change. There is possibility for joy. There is possibility for new things that will be good. It's so important for us to have an optimistic point of view or vision because whatever 
obstacle or challenge that we're going through currently, we know it's from the past. Mm -hmm. And if we keep feeding into that vibration, we're only feeding into the past. So what is it that we need to do? What is the intervention required to bring us into the possibility, into the whole genre of hope? And it is really new insights. And I always believe it has a deep connection to source where you kind of reset. You know, every time you make a connection to source, it's it's a pause, it's a resetting. It is a breath, and it is an opportunity to think a little bit detached from what you're accustomed to thinking, and that sometimes just opens up whole new portals. So in addition to your coach and being a coach, an author, publisher, you're also a potter. You know, I've seen that. I remember I saw that movie Ghost with Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze, <laughs> and the way they did that pottery, it's like they made doing pottery so good. What's that like? You know, what's pottery yeah. about? Why did you take it up? Uh, I, you know, it's really interesting. I, um, the first pottery class that I took in a high school classroom, the teacher that I had said to me, You've done this before. And I was like, not in this lifetime, but, you know, I believe it was a gift that was given to me for many different reasons. And it's funny that you bring the ghost thing up because would I say I'm a potter when somebody asked me, um, you know, about me and, a, and part of it is the pottery. They say, you mean like in the movie Ghosts? And I say, yes, <laughs> except Patrick Swayze never made it to my studio. <laughs> but uh, it's really, yeah. for me, it's a very spiritual experience. It's, um, it's taking something from the earth and creating something that is, um, would not have been tangible if it had been left in the earth and brings forth um, this beautiful gift, this, um, whether it be um, a vase, a cup, a plate, whatever it brings, it, it just brings forth something beautiful that normally would have been literally mud. And so it's, um, you know, when I think about some of the things like, like the movie ghost and, and watching people do this process that the, um, the word transformation is, is just like the one word that can seriously and wholly describe the process of making pottery. It's very mm -hmm. soothing to me. It's like, I, I always invite God into the procedure when I'm, you know, into the process when, as I'm doing the pottery. And I feel like I have an extra set of hands helping me along the way. Beautiful. Well, let's talk about what you included in Mayhem to Miracles, the chapter that I had read for one of my sharings, A Little Glimpse of Heaven. What was that glimpse for you? Oh, my goodness. So my mom had gone through um, uh, cancer, lung cancer. Um, both my parents died of lung cancer, sadly. But the experience with my mother was quite different than the experience with my father. And the glimpse of heaven that I got was a couple of nights before she actually passed on. And I was having a conversation with her. I was talking to her as I was putting her to bed. And I, I'm talking to her like I'm talking to you. And all of a sudden, she's off, looking in the corner of the room where the wall meets the ceiling and, and I could not get her attention. And so I let it go for a little bit. And then I, and then I realized what was happening and I said to her, okay, mom, who's here. And so she started to name all of my deceased relatives, my father, my grandmother, my aunt Rose. Now Sunday mornings, uh, Sunday afternoons at my aunt or my grandmother's house, who used to fight, by the way, to make the meal, to make the dinner. <laughs> I'm making this, no, I'm whatever. Anyway, but the, the, the whole, after the dinner was over, the guys would play cards and the women would go into another kitchen that they, my grandparent, my grandmother and my aunt Rose had another kitchen in their house where it was strictly for making the pasta. And so we would go and we would make pasta for the next Sunday's meal. And that night with my mom, as she told me all of the the people that were there, I said, and what are they doing? And she looked me straight in the eye and she said, they're cooking the pasta for the party. I'm going home. Wow. That immediately brought me to what I just described to you, my childhood and making pasta with my family. And it just gave me such a sense of, of um, peace and, you know, she had previously said to me, I know where I'm going, but I'm sure going to miss you. 
And, you know, I feel like I have a connect. I've had, I had a major connection to my mother. We were, we, I believe we were, um, soul sisters and I had a great connection to her when we were, when she was here and I still feel her in my spirit as she's on the other side. So that was my little sense of heaven, seeing that, you know, she's going home. She's being with all of my family. She's, she was, she was ready for a party. (laughs) You know, I'm still exploring this whole dimension about what happens after a soul transitions from playing its part. I've heard some folks say there is another side or there's a heaven, there's another space that they go to. And then I've heard in my tradition that the soul renounces the part that it's played and then it finds another womb and then it comes back and it continues the journey if it has not become so filled with love. And there's an element of an attachment. It says that attachment will bring it back to continue the journey until it gets it right, so to speak. And I've been exploring it a lot because as I witness my mother changing in front of my eyes, little by little, um, I'm being offered a window into something I'm supposed to understand more about who I am and where I've been and the decisions or the choices that I really need to make at this point in my life that take me closer to the, the to divinity or to love. And... I'm, it's it's got to be one of the most profound experiences. I can I, I can see how it did impact you. Where, you know, there you're talking to her. She turns to the wall and you're like, "What are you seeing?" And she says, "I'm seeing the whole clan and they're making pasta and it's time to go home." And it's like, how do you even respond to that? Yeah, she's seeing something internally inside of the soul behind her eyes, mm-hmm. something that with your two physical eyes you can't see. And I think why meditation and spirituality is so essential. It gives us some insights into what is really real, you know, and what isn't. So let's say that I'm going to ask you to complete a sentence that if I know then what I know now. Uh, I would um, spend more time knowing my other family members. Um, Mm -hmm. There there are some that created huge mayhem before this particular moment. And I guess I would spend more time in relation to this experience. I would spend more time in comforting and learning more about my other family members who just all they could do was grieve. And I was joyful for her. So I would get to know them more and I would, I would um, hopefully bring light to a darkness that they don't know how to get through. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. Any other final thoughts that you'd like to leave with us today, a main message for our beautiful audience? Hmm. You know, I think that the biggest thing that I want to tell people is that um, everyone has an experience, regardless of what it's focused on. Everybody has a story. Um, we all come here to have those experiences and learn and grow from them. And I totally understand everything that you said about, um, you know, transitioning and what happens to the soul. Yeah. What happens now in this lifetime, if there is another after this, and I believe that there is, what happens in this lifetime to you as an individual is important. So whether you share it in a book, whether you share it in an interview, whether you share it in your journal, or whether you whether you just talk to your friends or whatever, talk about what happens in this world because it is important. And regardless of what, what it is, we leave a legacy for our families and those who come after us. That's so beautiful. Um, folks, you got it. You know, this couldn't have been a better ending of our conversation with our special guests because we really need to identify What's the message of our lives, right? Right, Teresa? Like, yes. what is my message? And it's not that I want to imp- impart a message on you because I think I'm somebody important. My imparting of my message is coming from the deepest, innermost process that I'm going through. Mm-hmm. And in processing, it's like I'm getting towards my enlightenment. I'm doing the investigation on the soul. And that's the message, all the little gifts that are coming up from that. Mm-hmm. Leave us with the website where we can find more information about your work. And thank you so much for joining us today and being the spirit that you are and just 
just making our world a much better place. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Jenna. This has been wonderful. You can find me at TeresaVillardi.com. It's T-E-R-E-S-A-V-E-L-A-R-D-I.com. Or you can go to ConversationsThatMakeADifference.com. And you can listen to me on Dream Vision 7 Radio. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much, Teresa. Well, folks, you've gotten a lot of information to percolate on and to help you to move that little bit further. That's what I want. When you tune in, I really, my deepest wish is that after hearing one of these conversations, it just had your what? Coming to Jesus moment, as you said, Teresa? Yes. You know, it just gives you that aha moment. Like, yeah, I get it. I get it. A little bit more of me. I got it. I got it. It is my pure intent to see you strengthen your interior resolve so that you can deal with whatever has to show up for you. You'll always do it with grace and dignity. So thank you for joining us. Remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission. And I suspect we might be here to practice loving each other the same. Lots of love. Take care. Be kind. And see you soon.